Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. We are back in our bedroom, our master bedroom of our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home. We have a very big video for you guys today. Not a little short 10, 15 minute, but a big one. Because what are we doing in this video? We are going to be replacing the floor in our bedroom. The whole thing. The whole thing. Let's go. I stole your thunder. You did. We're going to continue working on the floor first. We have a little more insulation to put in around the edge, like under the bathroom wall. And then we will lay down our first piece of subfloor, which is three quarter or 23, 30 seconds inch sanded plywood. We have the plywood laying in place. We need to go ahead and cut back a little bit of this on length since our floor joists don't line up with how the wall framing is. I've put some marks here on left and right of the plywood. Now I'm gonna use some window trim that we save from our windows as a straight edge to scribe a line and then I'll cut this panel off with a circular saw. This next step is one that I consider pretty important and one that you probably wouldn't think about unless, well, I guess you've done this enough as I have. That cut I just made, it's not perfectly square. It's not a perfect straight factory edge. So what I'm going to do is flip the plywood all the way around, put my not so perfect edge against the definitely not perfect wall, and leave myself a nice square edge here because that's gonna become the joint in the middle of our floor and we're gonna have two other sheets reference off that cut. So this is the important end. Less important, goes towards the wall. Another thing to note, your tolerances in doing this kind of job, you've gotta be forgiving with yourself. Or you can just spend two days doing one piece. But you gotta realize that nothing's square. These walls, not square to those walls. So get it as close as you can, whatever makes you feel good, and then realize everything else can be cleaned up with either caulking, steel wool, whatever you need, just to seal it up good enough. The most important joint for us in this situation is the one right here above my feet where the plywood ends right over top of a joist and another one's gonna be connecting to it and going on from there. I was very picky that we're halfway, we're right on that middle line of this floor joist. And I have to say you have quite the glow coming off of you right now. Do I? From the yellow wall. Like a nuclear plant. <laughs> Are you a little jaundiced, honey? Oh, from oh this? <laughs> no, that's the uh, still-to-be-removed old fiberglass installation. Y'all didn't see that one. first sheet of plywood down and as you saw we did choose plywood we have um, abandoned OSB for flooring why because the tongue and groove is a pain you, it's just a pain so we are plywoodologists and plywood fan people from now on I have to say 
walking on that piece of plywood feels so much better because every other inch of this room right now you don't know if you're gonna go through or not so you step on a spot and you're like woo <laughs> yeah even though there is something covering the floor we are walking all in with Joyce we try to until we forget and then you almost fall so <laughs> but not over there that is rock solid and good yes. to go all right we get to have some more fun now cutting and ripping out the rest of this old subfloor the process for that is the same thing that we showed you earlier in this video set the circular saw to about three quarter inch depth cut in between where the joists are cut a little over four feet you know remove a section and then just pry it out and throw it out the window into the utility trailer that's sitting out there ready to be filled up So Angel just finished cutting our next row of blocking for the piece that's going to transition from the bathroom doorway into the bedroom. We've got kind of a unique situation there where in the past we did a bathroom renovation but we did not do the floor in the bedroom. So some blocking was added and that kind of stuff. So what we've done now is cleaned all that up and done the best we can to merge um, I guess old with new or not as new with really new. Either way just make sure the transition is as good as we can get it. There's a lot of blocking going on there, but really it's the best thing we can do. By far the wall section here has actually sunk down at least three quarters of an inch. So that adds, you know, madness to the method, I guess. But either way, we've got it all blocked up. We're getting ready to add the, I guess, butt joint blocking next, and then we'll cut the plywood to fit it in place.
It seems like we have figured out how to get the old floor up. Yeah. By cutting it and him stomping on it and then using a crowbar. It actually gets out most of the staples, which are a headache to get out. Right. That's why I usually bring out the oscillating tool and just cut them off because, yeah, it's worth it to do that. But that's because there's not been any water leaks in what we've done so far. Like, there's no right. old water leaks. If you have this press board flooring and you have water damage, forget about it. You're going you to be... just touch it and it goes poof. Yeah. <laughs> you might be better getting the floor up with a shop vac at that point. We might have done that in the past. That was in the boys' bedroom. Mm -hmm. I know there was that in there. Yeah. And the kitchen mm -hmm. where the sink and window was. That yeah. whole fiasco. Ah, memories. So yeah, as far as like our process, we've got it down pat. Where there's no, there's no question anymore with us on how to take up a mobile home floor and replace it. It's just not fun. <laughs> None of it is fun, except when you get to this point and you're staying on the new floor. And you're like, yes, I can see the end in sight. Right. I don't have to think where the studs are or joists are to <laughs> walk. I don't have to not step in that area. Doing all of these renovations and stuff like that, I found that I have my favorite tools. Sam has his. It just happens. Sam really likes this one. It's got, I don't know, it's more beef and it. it's thicker and I guess has more pull power. I like this little bitty skinny one because I can get underneath and in between a lot more. I don't know. This one's my favorite one. I'm here to translate for Tool Talk. <laughs> this is an S Twing Pry Bar 18 inch. This is called a stubby bar. There'll be links down below if you want to buy Angela or Sam's. <laughs> Mine is better. No, I wouldn't agree with that. I always go for this stuff. Let's go. Let's go before they figure out you're right. All right, I'm gonna let you talk since this next segment is all about you. Um, you broke something just to no, get something, apparently. Not quite. I'm teaching you too so, well. So here we have my face. <laughs> here we have our old oscillating tool. It is a Craftsman. Um, I think Sam said we've had it two to three years. Two and a half to three years. Yes, since 2019. <clears throat> and so it has done the kitchen, the boys' bedroom, bathroom, dining room. And now starting this room. Well, yeah. it started giving out on us. It's finally started to die. So we had to do a big box Lowe's trip, you know. So we picked up a new one. <laughs> and uh, one of us is more excited than the other. So let's go ahead and get the camera out and we'll unbox this. Hey, don't start yet. Don't start yet. <laughs> and we'll show you guys the new tool. <laughs> Stop. Wait. Let's see what we have here. And it comes out all as one. Now this one did not come with a battery, but because of our many tools in this section, Craftsman stuff, we didn't need any more batteries. So, this is pretty cool. It has a nice little trigger right here which is I'd say an improvement over the other one because it had a little flip switch on the back so you couldn't turn it on and off just at a finger whim. While Angela's dig around in the box looking at bits and stuff 
The main difference between the two, they're both Craftsman, they're both 20 volt. This one, the new one, is brushless. It was about $30 more to get the brushless model than the original brushed. So we figured it was worth it. I mean, we're already invested in the batteries and hopefully this one will last a lot longer. I mean, given two and a half to three years is great on this guy, especially as much torture as we put it through. But we figure, why not? Seeing it here in person, it is more compact. No, it's not. It's about the same size. Forget about that. It looks it looks better. Looks like a better quality, which would be what you'd expect with a little bit more money. It looks like it does not have oh, okay, it does. This little quick release thing. Cause it just looks a little bit different. Sweet. There you and go. we have some batteries hooked up and we're ready to go. Are you gonna use oh yeah, you got some staples to cut. I do. That's what are we gonna do with this? Excited. Keep it as backup? Sure. I mean it works intermittently. So I guess it's push button level because it said it has like varial what? <laughs> Sorry. It is variable speed trigger. Or Thank you. Push button level. <laughs> this one's variable speed, but it has a wheel. Do you have a wheelie? No, it does not have a wheel. Ah. Uh, yeah. So alright, yeah. I'm gonna get to work. That's cool. I don't envy you using it, but it's a cool new tool. <laughs> So after all of our complaining and saying no one ever does blocking, look at that. We found some blocking. Although they attached it with drywall screws and it tapped out really quickly. But hey, someone did do blocking. So at least give you that credit. What we are going to do next is something that's called sistering a floor joist. We have several of these that are not the greatest looking from old water damage. None of this is wet. None of this is recent damage, but it is old stuff and it has the joist looking not their best. So what we're going to do is a technique called sistering a joist. It's where you have your original one and then you put brand new wood right up next to it and alongside it for a certain length and then you attach it together. Basically, you're stiffening up the original joist with another one or another two to give yourself a nice strong area to support not only the floor, but in our case, the exterior wall of the home. The biggest thing to do whenever you're sistering your joists, especially with a mobile home, is to make sure that piece you add on is long enough to reach at least to and beyond your metal I-beam supporting structure underneath. In our case, it looks like our I-beam is around two foot from the wall, and we're gonna be cutting sister joists out of one eight foot long two by six at five foot and three foot lengths. So we're gonna be doing double sistering just because we generally kind of go overboard on things and we want this to be really, really good and never have to touch it again. So that's why you're gonna see us use two of them. The three foot makes it to the I-beam and beyond, the five foot definitely does. So we'll go ahead and here to our bathroom cutting station. We'll put a two by six on the chop saw, cut it, and then we'll see you guys in the floor to do some sistering.
We have sistered the three joists that looked bad, and really not much of it was rotten. So yeah. Mostly visual ugliness rather than true rot. Cosmetic. Yeah. I mean, hey, this house survived being hauled across, you know, to this property, so it's not that bad in this area. Mm -mm. So as you guys got to see a little bit of clips there, you saw some big woodworking clamps on some boards and some kind of weirdness going on. Basically what we were doing is we thought we were going to clamp the the new sister 2x6s to match the original floor. Basically what we found was here in the middle, it was a little bit lower than it should be. Maybe a little bit of sagging took place or something. So as I twisted the clamps and tightened everything down, I felt it bringing the floor up to where it should be. So then we just went ahead and attached everything. And so in the end, we got a better, stiffer floor now. Nice. And what I mean by bringing it up is there's the metal eye beam right below this. And these boards rest right on top of that. So that's why, you know, it's either go up or down. So we clamped it till they were flush. And I felt that the floor was being picked up a little bit. Just a little explanation, I guess, on why there were some woodworking clamps and what exactly all that was doing. Next, we're going to go ahead and get the blocking for the outside wall and in about a foot. Mm -hmm. Which is where our joint is going to be. Yes, but we're going to go ahead and do them both at the same time because they should be the same size just so we can go ahead and get it all knocked out. Even though the camera's probably not showing it too much, it is pretty much dark. Can't really see to work a lot more in here tonight. So we're calling it quits for this evening, but sit tight, the video's not over, because, well, honestly, we got more floor to do, and we're just gonna exactly. lump it all together. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. for being so loud in here we've got two box fans running to help ventilate the area and just kind of try and keep ourselves cool it is like 83 degrees outside today which is pretty warm for you know April but whatever sun's out we're appreciative of that and we're here working so can't complain what I'm going to do next is tackle yes the yellow insulation behind me 
A lot of you have asked, oh my gosh, are you getting rid of that stuff? Surely to goodness you're not keeping it. Well, now's the time you can take a sigh of relief seeing me throw it out the window and into our utility trash trailer, which is right out there. Well, this will fog up in two seconds. There we go. Majority of it is out. There's a little bit right here on this wall, but it goes behind the bathroom wall and then behind our shower. I'll have to look and see if I want to cut it out or honestly leave it. And when the day comes, we do our siding, which we do plan to redo the siding of the home. We'll be able to have access to it from outside and we can replace it and fix it then. That's probably what I'm going to do. So don't freak out. I know eventually in the future we will fix that. I think for now, I don't know. I'm still thinking. So there you go. Don't know what I'm doing. So since I took off the insulation, you guys can see some of the gnarly framing that's over there. There is wall framing that needs to be replaced. I'm not going to do that right now. I want to stay with the, the theme of this video and you know what we're doing. I want to finish out the floor in the bedroom. Here at the closet, what used to be the walk-in closet, what we're changing, and then over to the doorway and then up next to the wall. I think it's best to go ahead and finish the floor. That way we'll have a safe place to walk on. Most definitely. And then we can tackle on reframe, reframing and redoing that wall in another video, honestly, but just well, kind of chunk it apart. That is keeping everything separated because we're gonna have to like, what? Gotta keep them separated. I don't know that one. We gotta put in the electrical boxes and stuff like that to the stud. So we're gonna be doing wall work next. After the so floor. Works. Yes. Floor work, then wall work. All right, more of the same. We got a little <laughs> bit of tear out in the closet area and we just rinse and repeat. Nothing like where we've been already. Yeah. Wait, it's exactly like where we've been already. I know, not, okay, the amount. Right. Uh, we're about over halfway done. We are. Let's go. Let's go. She says, let's go. And now we're going to use the magic of movies and make this over really quick. And we're done. Boy, I wish it was only that easy.
Well, we have reached a really big milestone. The majority of the floor has been done. I would say 95%. Yes. The parts that have not been done is over here at our window where we have to do some wall reframing. I figure I'm going to wait on that because I'll need access to the bottom probably. And if we're reframing a wall, we might as well have plenty of access when that time comes. So how does it feel to be able to safely walk all most, over the floor? Most all over the floor. It's very nice and it's very sturdy and the places that we got used to avoiding, <laughs> it's weird being able to step in them now. <laughs> yeah, it will feel really, really weird. I, well, when the furniture's back in here, because we used to have like set pathways that we would take. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's a little bit farther down the road, I guess, but. Hopefully not too far. Hopefully not. I don't know about you, but I am glad to be pretty much done with the floor. Oh yes. <laughs> I hate doing floor work. It's like everything else is like not a big deal compared to having to get in the floor and put in the blocking and kill your back and knees and whatever else. Yeah, from here on out, it's just uh, easier because you're not on the floor. Right. Except for when we install our flooring, but we got time. That'll to be okay for that. Yeah, well, that'll be good. That'll be at the end of the road. Yeah. So I'm showing you a box of screws because this is the first time we've used these Spax name brand screws and they are really, really good. Mm -hmm. They're it's the same price as the other ones, I think GRK, whatever you find at your box stores. But these are made in the USA and I felt like they did a lot better than the others. The other ones, it did take a lot longer for them to grip and go in and made you feel like you didn't know what you're doing. <laughs> yep, they're not confidence boosters. But these works pretty good. I say that not because we're sponsored or anything, but just no. to share that, you know, if you're in the store and you wonder about these green box Spax screws, they're pretty good. I like them. Mm -hmm. They are Torx drive, which is hands down the only kind of screws we would ever recommend anybody getting. Phillips jump and strip out and they're terrible. Torx bit drive at least are good once they get going. Yes. They might be a little hard to start, but then you're good to go. Right. So, all right, that was that. While we're showing and telling. You can tell this thing has been used a good bit now. We've gone through several bits and I have to say I really like it. You gotta be careful with this one because it is paddle, you know, the paddle switch. There are safety lockouts if you turn them on that it won't work that way. But otherwise, I think it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely lived through its needs in this room and there'll be more stuff for it. Um, there actually will be something cool that we'll use this tool with whenever it comes time for drywall. Something cool to show off. Another cool tool. You know we like those. Yep, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's so hard though is because usually you hear it's the man that's like, Hey, I want a new tool. Well, I'm the same way in this relationship, so we're in trouble because we're both like, ooh. <laughs> yep. Yep, two grown-ups with the same interest in buying tools. That's all right. There's worse habits to have. There are. We don't drink, we don't gamble, we just buy tools. <laughs> and we renovate. So I guess that's it. Um, trying to think of any other questions or things that may pop up. Um, the blocking that we do with plywood is not required if you do tongue and groove, like subfloor, like factory. So that's why you don't see it on new homes. But we choose to do it even when we do OSB tongue and groove because that just gives us a rock solid base and we just know that little bit of work, little bit of material just will forever go a long ways. We won't have to pull it back up. Right. Another thing since you said about that, the reason we don't glue our floor down when a lot of people will suggest and tell us we should is because we've had to go back and pull flooring up in the past. In the kitchen, we had to do that because we had the water line swapped. That moment right then was like, okay, yeah, I'm fine never gluing the floor down. We've not had any problems with squeaks no. or creaking of our floors in the bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, dining room, boys room, living room, everywhere. Right. Probably because we always do the blocking around the perimeter. So, I don't know, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. There's a lot of different ways to install your sub floor. For us, this is how we roll, what we like to do, and just want to throw that out there. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And otherwise, we will see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. And we can just knock it all out.
in one full swift whatever. Okay. So we can go ahead and just get it all knocked out. Wait, wait, wait. I gotta look at you again. Oh. Oh, you wanna get your oscillating tool? After you use it so much and show it off? Oh. This is all that same video. Well, big video. It doesn't have a battery. Big video. <laughs> Since our floor joists don't line up with how the wall framing is, I've gone and marked. I've gone and. I've put some marks here on left and right. Set up like I like. It's fine. There we go. Wow. Good job, camera. Good job. Camera, you're doing a good job. Camera's doing a good job. Yeah, here we go. Focus on the face. Expose properly. Now set exposure. Okie dokie. Go ahead and get it all knocked out. Let's go. Hey, I did your line. You did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from here on out, I'll not, well done. <laughs> Welcome to hide the windows. <laughs> there we go. Wow, crooked glasses there. We'll just take them off. I don't think the sun's gonna shine in here. Nope. We have the floor ready. We are getting ready to go ahead. Oh yeah, I'm getting ready, 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 get ready. Just a little explanation, I guess, on why there were work wood What you doing, guys? Uh, uh, we were making home for this little guy. Yep. He, and he also, I need great. to practice doing this like ice sculpturing, but it's dirt sculpturing. Which I use this and do that to make reason holes for the little cat. And I make sure this is the door so no birds get him. I want to make And do Each caterpillars time. eat like these? I think so. They aren't from a leaf. You mean from a tree? Yeah. yeah. And in, in a, on a tree I've been putting some of them on over that way in, in the woods. It has like three tent caterpillar nests in it. On it, I mean. <laughs> 